You are listening to a Trans Real News special report. Due to an unforeseen attack by a Precambrian monster on our studio, we are currently unable to bring you our regular program. Instead, we will be playing you samples from an unfinished documentary by our own Yaren Eorin. We hope it will inform and entertain while we clean up the mess. Thanks for doing this, Toby. I appreciate it. No problem, Yaren. I'm happy to help, although I'm not sure how many people are going to be interested in knowing about the guys who tell the news, rather than just hearing the news. Maybe, but let's let them decide, huh? I suppose. So why don't you start by telling us your name and what you do here? I'm Toby Damned. I'm the anchorman. I'm also a founding member of the Transreal News Network, and behind the scenes I'm the executive producer of the show. How did you find out about Reality Beyond Earth? <laughs> by hanging out with the weirdest guy in my university journalism classes. He was brilliant, but he was also really out there, and I wanted to make a weird friend. He was constantly going on about this chaos magic stuff, and he invited me to try a ritual. I was hesitant, but I also had an anthropological paper due, so I decided that maybe documenting a modern occultist would get me some extra credit. While I was hanging out with him, I took some of those plutonian pills he had, and I ended up wandering around outside the time-space continuum for weeks, and then waking up five minutes later. And the rest was history. How did that translate into creating a news program for other psychonauts? I was serious about journalism. Hunter S. Thompson and Ruben Salazar had been heroes of mine, especially for how they brought powerful people to account, for different reasons, of course. Funny enough, John Stossel, too, in an odd kind of way. I believe in the power of journalism. And here's this whole new world that nobody was talking about. And I gathered a lot of people got hurt out there while they were exploring the psychocosm. So I started my own news blog, and connected with a bunch of occult groups and other people interested in exploring the newosphere. Then the psychic war happened and needed real coverage. I founded the Transreal News Network to keep people posted, and to a degree, to help people fighting for the little guy, and help them keep safe. Eventually, I stumbled into some funding, and some like-minded souls. We built a media company out of it. I stuck to the news, but some of the reporters, teachers, and mystics who I'd come to rely on moved on to create things like Psionics Today, Matrix Watch, and the Time Travel Journal. Now it's way bigger than me, with things like book publishing coming out. What do you do in your off time? I don't have much of that. I'm always herding cats and putting up fires. I spend some time at the shooting range, and I fly radio-controlled aircraft, although in a way both of those are news-related. I have a cactus garden. I like old black-and-white movies. What's your favorite movie? I'm tempted to say The Network or The Paper, but both would be a lie, even though I love them. Uh, Twelve Angry Men might be closer to the truth. Does the universe still have rules? Of course it does. They are more flexible than we thought, but there is still right and wrong, good and evil, and the basic rules of the human mind. I suspect that things like causality are still running the show. There are just more steps in between. Walter, Warren, you guys got a minute? Sure, I think so. Absolutely. Come have a seat. I'm working on a documentary right now about the people who make trans real news. Can I talk to you guys? Absolutely. I'm happy to help. Uh, I think I can do a little bit of that. No need to be shy. It's Yair and he's friendly. Okay, then why don't you start by telling us what you do here? Well, Warren and I, we're both responsible for collecting the data to create the forecasts that we use to warn people about time-space distortions and reality distortions across the globe. I also do the actual forecasting on the air, and Warren here handles the microphones and mixing boards. How did you first find out that there is a reality beyond the everyday and beyond Earth as we knew it? My brother and I were both in school together. Warren was taking physics and I was taking philosophy. At one point, we were both reading a lot of Lovecraft and I was getting really interested in teleology. At the same time, Warren was studying quantum mechanics. 
we both started looking for ways that we could test whether reality is just a mutable perceptual frame. We started devising tests and machines and we just sort of blundered into it. What do you make of all the mystics and occultists who reached it by other means? It was surprising at first. Definitely not our kind of crowd, although Warren got along great with a coven of local Wiccans. Shh, keep it PG. Anyway, it actually helped us design the time-space reality monitoring systems we invented later on down the road, because it forced us to change how we perceived, well, perception. How do you forecast weird time, space, and reality events for your broadcast? A supercomputer that Warren and I invented that collects information from all around the globe by way of automated monitoring systems. It's unbelievably hard to maintain it all. Yes, and I'm afraid that it takes up an impressive chunk of the entire TRNN budget these days. Good thing it has become so useful over the last few years. Nowadays, you guys are as much media people as scientists. Warren here even maintains our microphones and control boards. Walter is borrowing a lot of how he presents things from TV weathermen. Does this feel like a step down for you two? No, oh, no, not at all. Science is ultimately the art of informing people about their world. Warren and I get to publish every day with our wild findings. Doing it as a part of a newscast saves me a lot of time. Ultimately, I turn my notes into papers we publish in more traditional scientific journals. What do you do in your off time? Warren and I play a lot of pool. He's a wizard at the pool table. I make a little extra money writing smartphone apps just for fun. Adventure games, mostly. Does the universe still have rules? Warren had better answer this one. Of course it does. Most of the rules you are used to, time, space, gravity, they are all preconditions for the mind to even apprehend reality. Maybe even make reality. Your reality is just another force that is related to consciousness itself. Nothing I have seen since the breakdown has ever contradicted the assumptions of McKenna and Leary's theories of consciousness and the assumptions made by quantum mechanics. It's just that the Newtonian laws can sometimes be temporarily up for negotiation when consciousness is interrupted by irreality. But this is getting technical fast. Let's just say that the mind makes reality, and the mind has limits before it stops working. So reality can be bent by warping the mind, but it can never be broken. Oh, I like that one. Let's write it down. Thanks for doing this, Clee. Oh, it's no problem, darling. You get to be interviewed, too. So, why don't you start by telling us who you are and what you do here? My name is Yaren Yoren. I'm the last investigative journalist left from the original Transreal News crew. In fact, I'm the last guy other than Toby who comes more from a news media background than an occult one or a mystical one or a weird science one. All right, darling. Here's the big question. How did you find out about the reality beyond what we understood from the everyday on Earth? I was actually doing a piece on a series of weird crimes. Kids doing unsettling stuff in graveyards, head shops being robbed, bizarre graffiti that was putting a small town back into a satanic panic, you know? I was trying to play the cult angle. Heaven's Gate was still in a lot of people's minds back then, and they were starting to worry about the big Hollywood cult that you don't talk about. Anyway, I tracked down the people doing it and found that they weren't kids at all, but grown-ass adults doing weird occult stuff. I told them who I was and I asked for an interview. It might have been a pretty cool angle, you know? First show people what the cops are saying, then anonymously get to show them what the criminals are saying, and go back and forth getting an idea of how the investigation was happening versus what the criminals were doing. I figured I could win a prize out of it somehow. But then they showed me this stuff that nearly broke my brain. It cost me my career in the end. I started writing about all this weird psychedelic stuff, all the noosphere and astral planes travel, for a respectable newspaper. I ended up blackballed. I was working on a book on the occult later that probably never would have been published when Toby approached me. The rest is history. What do you do in your off time? The most mundane, grounding thing I can. I'm a part of a bowling league, and a darts league, and I have a bar trivia team. A different game or practice almost every day. I also like to think of myself as a connoisseur of scotch whiskey. How good a bowler are you? 
I was expecting you to ask a booze question, Clee. I know. Got to keep you on your toes, darling. Terrible, really. But I keep showing up, and I keep improving by millimeters at a time. Which is why I don't get kicked from the team. Does the universe still have rules? I don't know anymore. I honestly don't think I understand them. It's why I'm asking that question to everyone else. It's scary, you know? Especially as it's getting harder and harder to ignore it all. Pretty soon something's gonna happen that will wake everyone up. Do you wish you could rejoin the normies? Nah, you can't go back. Ignorance isn't bliss. It's a stupor that makes you easy prey. All right, we'll turn it around now and do the interview I'd planned. Okay, so could you state your name and what you do here at Transreal News? Clee Maxwell. The spirit guide, I'd like to say. I do travel advisories. I tell people about sights and dangers that they might encounter while traveling, especially if I can keep them up to date and interesting. How did you discover that there was a world and a reality beyond Earth and the things we were told? It's been so long I can hardly remember. Not the usual, I was interested in the occult and played around with the gates of sleep nonsense you usually hear from men my age. Or the, I became a feminist and joined a Wiccan coven in hopes of getting girls to like me story that's also frequent. I think I always knew. I never bought the lies. They're like fairy stories they tell you as a kid, darling. They're meant to keep you from wandering too far from mummy and daddy. I figured if they were trying to keep me out of the woods, there must be something fun in there. The same with heavy metal, comic books, hallucinogens, always trying to keep you in a safe box. Why shouldn't the globe be any different? I guess I'm a contrarian. Put a boundary up, I will try to cross it. Give me a universal rule. I'll at least try to bend it. You must have been a handful when you were a kid. I try to be a handful now, darling. I think of life as a dashing and bold adventure. There is too much to see and do to settle down. Hell, I only come to the studio every eight or nine episodes, except recently. Better to trans with them so I can keep roaming. But I'm not keen on hurting people. Good fun is had with people, not at their expense. You rarely talk about the past. I've been trying to learn more about the crew here, and you're the hardest guy to pin down? Oh, not at all. Innuendo aside. But innuendo's so fun. Hmm. If you must know, I don't like to talk about it. Because my blatant disregard for the laws of God and man has taken me to some dangerous and painful places. I like to leave the past in the past. What do you do in your off time? It's all off time. Or maybe it's all on time. I'm a full-time adventurer. A seeker of wonder and pleasure and all that. It so happens that I have mistakes I have made and I can warn people about them. And it's true that I've seen wonders that I can tell them about, both based on my experience. So I have something to share. And Toby was kind enough to give me somewhere to share it. There are so many parties and fun times and people to meet. If I have one hobby that keeps me orbiting around certain people, it's fantasy role-playing games. An artifact from my contrarian childhood I just can't give up, I suppose. Does the universe still have rules? What a strange question. The rules have always been there, and they have never changed. We just don't understand them very well and keep making bad models, darling. We'll get them right eventually. Are you sure Yaren would want me in the documentary? You're part of the story now, darling. He'll thank me later. But I suppose being from the distant future, a lot of his standard questions would be silly. So why don't we start with something more ap apropos? When are you from? I am from a possible 32nd century where man has finally again become master of his earth after countless disasters with magic and chaos. Man has fallen to the Stone Age and risen to incredible wonders three times between now and then. And why does the Horde keep rampaging across the Enlightenment and modernity? This was the time when technology was its most advanced, but when men were at their worst. The combination made it easy for them to plunge into dark times. We are trying to harden the men of this era so that when the next era comes, they will be more aware. 
The suffering we cause today will be nothing compared to the suffering man may endure tomorrow. That sounds very bleak. Not at all. It is a great hope. I was born in one possible future. Where we prune the tree of time today, new better branches may yet grow. Perhaps we can make a future where my family doesn't need to be warriors as need has made us. Why did you become a part of Transreal News? The contempt for journalists runs strong with my people. In the 21st century, they went from being truth-tellers to being thought engineers. And few noticed. But the inability to tell reality from fantasy is one of the great weaknesses of this era. And that is the true cause of the slime, which is one of the greatest calamities that has echoed through the millennium between us. But there are still truth-tellers out there, and Yaren was one of them. My blind bias humiliated the Horde and set back our shaping of the tree. I was cast from the Horde until I balanced my cha and lifted some truth-tellers up. Balanced your what now? That is no matter, and a bit taboo to speak of. Heed not such details. Know that I must become a true journalist like the one I had slain. To tell the truth as he did, that I might make amends and set time right before I am to be admitted back to the Horde. Even then, my rank as master must be re-earned. What do you do in your time off? I compose ballads of my greatest ancestors, but I do not have my zither, so I shall not perform them until my cha is balanced. Does the universe still have rules? <laughs> of course it has! You feeble primitives just badly apprehend them. Does the... Does the universe have rules? <laughs> you have been listening to a Transreal News special report, and I hope it has entertained and informed you. We will return to our regular format once we have cleaned all the slime and chitin out of our new studio. In the meantime, thank you for listening. The Transreal News was created, directed, written, and performed by Brian C. Rideout, and produced by Stormhead Productions, and is released under a Creative Commons by Attribution non-commercial 4.0 license. This episode of Transreal News included music and sound effects from Pixabay. For show notes or contact information, visit trans-real.stormheadproductions.ca or visit me on Twitter at transrealpod. Thank you so much for listening.